A response to Jeremy Oyer's incoherent, incorrect assertions. Let's take a look. Jeremy Oyer states in writing that we've issued a terrorist threat and also posted hate speech. Let's compare what we've said in detail with the words of the Bible, which are clearly hate speech. Here's one of the comments that Jeremy Oyer uses to try and make his case. Let's read it. The two queens are still dwelling on the fact that Jesus was a moron and loony who ran his big mouth, just like Queens, the penniless convicted felon, and Big Butt, the penniless guano ball. The turd Jesus ran his dumb mouth claiming to be God's only son, in a highly religious place, at a time when idiots thought the earth was flat, even when a round example, the moon, hung right in front of their moronic faces. Jesus, a reject and lousy carpenter who had no connection to any phony god, since none exist, the moron Jesus wouldn't shut his dumb trap. The nice religious people stoned his dumb ass to death. Today he'd just be shot up with Thorazine and shoved in a padded room with the convicted felon and Big Butt, the two queens of pure idiocy. Poor penniest losers can't think straight. That's why they are part of a tiny shrinking cult of dumb shits. Pathetic. Jeremy Oyer has used this entire body of text which doesn't contain a single threat. Just badmouth is the idiotic mythical character of Jesus, an unproven clown who literally was stoned to death for taunting very religious people saying that he was God's only son, when of course we don't even know if he existed and even if he did, he was just a man, like every other animal on the planet. Now let's look at the next comment this idiot tries to use. We weren't friends with Dr. Tiller Felon. Were you trying to hurt us emotionally or ridicule us in some way with your deranged comments? That's especially odd for a big mouth Bible cramming Christian convict. How churchly of you. Go sit on a steeple, dopey. All churches should be burned to the ground. It would solve a lot of the planet's problems. We suggest the Vatican as a first strike. Clear everyone out and dust it off with the big stuff. We could get rid of that pig pit in 20 minutes or less. Or all of the lying pedophiles can be booted out to find real jobs that contribute to society instead of taking tax-free money to molest young boys. And the property can be sold along with all the assets and the funds directed to stem cell research. Once again, Jeremy Oyer has used a comment that doesn't contain any threats. Clearing people out of a building to demolish it isn't a terrorist threat. Here's an actual threat, and we can see the difference because it talks about murdering human beings, and of course the origin is the Bible, as with most murderous violence. Religion is always the chief culprit. A man or woman who acts as a medium or fortune teller shall be put to death by stoning. They have no one but themselves to blame for their death. Leviticus 2027. So the Bible is telling us to murder all fortune tellers. Why not take a run through your local yellow pages and see if there are any fortune tellers in town? How murderous. Here the Bible is instructing human beings to kill other human beings via Leviticus 2027, a work of fiction written by crazy ignorant men. And it also suggests that the fortune tellers will have no one to blame for their death but themselves. No, actually they'd have the people who stone them to death to blame for their death. They're the ones who would have committed murder. Of course, at the hands of the Bible, a accessory to murder. Now let's look at our last comment that Jeremy Oyer tries to imply is somehow a threat. Tomorrow we'll destroy 50 Bibles. Should be fun, as always. They always burn so colorfully. 
releasing the lies into the freedom of science's universe. It's magical. And after yesterday's mass burning, we found two hundred-dollar bills that were forgotten in a suit pocket from several months ago. Burning the shitty Bibles has great rewards. There is no gods, just a reality that the Bible is literally a pile of shit. We await tomorrow's wonderful anti-religious ceremony of tossing fifty Bibles into a giant drum and dumping kerosene onto them, and tossing a match onto the wad of dog crap. Everyone should burn at least one Bible each day. It will help rid the earth of lies and idiotic dogma. Paging shit faces God, paging shit faces gods, oh yeah, we stabbed her through the heart and buried her lying ass earlier, laughing out loud. So, we have burning a book of fiction, which of course is not a crime. Take any book you like and burn it, especially the Bible since it's full of hate-filled lies, like this, which encourages murder. Now, here's an example of actual hate speech. If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them shall be put to death for their abominable deed. They have forfeited their lives. Right, according to Leviticus 2013, another bit of fiction written by ignorant men who preached hate speech. The Bible is disgusting, a hideous book of hate, as in this example, and this one as well. You should not let a sorceress live. Good old Exodus 22.17 with more hate speech. Exactly how would one determine whether someone is a sorceress or not? So the Bible dictates murder and hate. How repulsive! And just as criminally murderous is the Pope, who went to Africa, the continent with the greatest spread of deadly AIDS, and told millions of uneducated, ignorant religious blacks that AIDS is caused by the use of condoms. The equivalent of telling someone that eating broken glass is actually good for them. John Rat Singer the current pope and a former Nazi youth, should be tried and, if convicted, hung for his attempt at encouraging the murder and suffering of millions and millions of uneducated blacks on the continent of Africa. We can't think of a more hideous, deliberate act of murderous sickness. Does the pope actually think that contraceptives a barrier between disease actually promotes a disease? If he does, he's just a moron. If he's that stupid, he shouldn't be in any position of power. And as we all know, ignorance of the law is no excuse. So if the Pope is ignorant, he shouldn't be speaking to anyone at all, especially concerning health and disease. If he did this deliberately, which a trial would bring out, then he should be convicted and sentenced, and ultimately hung for encouraging the suffering and death of millions and millions of people, human beings. How sickening and murderous. That's hate speech. What would you expect from a former Nazi? Ratzinger. And if just one human being in Africa dies from the Pope's comments, he should be held accountable as an accessory to murder. Religion is the most murderous hate speech on our planet, bar none. Thank goodness Barack Obama passed a hate speech law, which will now protect homosexuals from the hate speech of the Bible and their violence and murderous leaning.